Video screen objects are composed of both a 3D screen with an image applied to it as a texture, as well as an optional front or rear projector. The image shown on the screen can be customized with your company logo or any other image you might need. It comes with a number of standards included by default, but most of these can be customized to suit your needs. To insert a video screen, first select it from the Spotlight tool set. Then, click once in the document to set the center point of the screen portion of the video screen. The second click determines the rotation of the object. Like with many other objects in Vectorworks, if it's the first time you're adding one of these objects to a given document, you'll see the Edit Video Screen dialog appear, which mirrors all of the options available in the Object Info Palette later. Video screens can also be inserted into walls, and the insertion modes in the toolbar allow for the insertion point to instead be the left or right of the screen, or even a custom offset distance from the center, useful if you'll be placing a large number of screens one after the other. Screen type lets you select what configuration you want to use. Doing this will determine which sets of settings are available below. You can choose from rear or front projector, or an LED screen, with LED screens being the most limited in what can be customized since it doesn't include any projector hardware. Note, a video screen object in LED screen mode is not the same as the LED screen object covered in a separate tutorial. Screen aspect controls the aspect ratio of the screen object. 16.9 is the most common for modern screens, but a large array of presets are provided as well. Stock size will change based on the aspect ratio you've selected, and various preloaded sizes are listed by their length and width. Width, height, and diagonal display the current screen size based on the selections made above. This is more an informative feature for designers. It isn't where you control the screen size. If you have a custom round screen shape, then this will instead be replaced with a diameter value, which can be manually altered. Frame allows you to alter or remove completely the frame that surrounds the screen. Each edge's width can be controlled individually, with round screens, of course, having only a single continuous edge to control. Depth will set the thickness of the frame. This applies to the entire frame. If you have the frame type enabled, the edge value will control the offset of the frame relative to the face of the screen itself, up to a maximum of the total depth of the frame. Screen tilt allows you to tilt the screen towards or away from its default configuration. Positive values tilt the top of the screen away from the viewer, and negative values tilt it towards the viewer. Total clearance displays the total vertical clearance height required by the complete video screen object from the floor to the top of the screen, including any border, dress kit, valence, or other accessories. Show coverage zone 2D only will show an approximation of where viewers would need to sit to see the screen properly. This is useful for determining whether you need to alter screen size, show whether the view angle may be disrupted by columns, or even if you need to add more video screen objects to the environment overall. Zone reference calculates the coverage zone above based on screen width, height, or diagonal measurement. Normally, this would be left set to width. Viewing angle indicates the maximum viewing angle of the screen relative to dead on. This is more important in non-projection screens. For instance, an LCD screen would have a viewing angle value in its factory specifications. Near multiplier and far multiplier allow you to alter the actual values for the coverage zone while still maintaining a relationship to the screen size. Screen support lets you select the type of support structure used to hold the screen. The choices are none, goalpost, which includes two legs and is similar to commercial fast fold systems, tripod creates a roll up type support arrangement roll down case or roll up case. Show feet, which appears for the goalpost configuration, selects how the feet of the frame display, both, front, back, or none. Depth for case supports specifies the size of the case drawn at the top, roll down case, or bottom, roll up case, of the video screen. The case length is determined automatically by the screen size. The case will always have a square profile, so setting a depth of 20 centimeters, for instance, would also make the height of the case 20 centimeters. Motor adds space to the side of the case for the motor. Select whether the motor is located on the right or on the left, 
or select None for manually operated screens. Opening sets the location on the case where the screen exits the case. You can select Front, Center, or Back. Add Dress Kit. When goalpost or tripod screen legs are selected, adds a dress kit of draperies to conceal the projector, rear, and supports from the audience view. The color of the dress kit can be controlled directly below. Left and right leg width will indicate the width of the drapery on the left and right side of the screen respectively. This thickness originates from the center of the screen going outwards, so increasing the value will increase the width of the drapery outward, reducing it will bring it inward. Valence height simply sets the height of the drapery above the screen. Border overlap indicates the amount of overlap of the dress kit drapery over all sides of the screen's border. This value affects all edges of the border equally. Pleat width specifies the width of each pleat for the drapes on all sides of the screen. Pleat depth specifies the depth of the pleats for the left, right, and valence draperies, with the distance starting at zero at the top and reaching the full distance at the bottom of the drapes. Hide Screen will let you turn the screen display on and off while still preserving all previously set values. Edit Screen Image, if you have RenderWorks, will allow you to set an image to be displayed on the screen itself. You can select from a few default images or create your own image base texture for a custom image. The screen image line below will simply show the name of the image or texture being used. Currently, it's only possible to add a static image to the screen, not an animated graphic or video. Where the options above control the screen, support, and drape, the options below all control aspects of the projector object. Show projector, as with the show screen above, disables the display of the projector component without forgetting the projector-related settings below. Show projection cone simply toggles the display of the projection cone lines. Projector model is where you select the general style of projector you want to use. This is also where you choose the orientation of the projector body, as well as whether the projector is housed by a cage or not. Projector aspect will show the projector aspect ratio. In most cases, this is predetermined by the screen aspect ratio above. Left and right shift shifts the projector to the left or right relative to the screen. Make sure that if using this option, the projector you intend to use in the actual environment is capable of this offset, otherwise the positioning may not be possible. Horizontal offset angle and horizontal offset percent simply display the results of the value entered above differently. When the projector has been shifted to the left or right, point at screen center keeps the projected pointed at the center of the screen if checked. Projector tilt sets the tilt of the projector in degrees relative to the horizontal plane. Positive values will tilt the projector up, and negative values will point it down. Place based on sets the position of the projector either based on a fixed lens size or the projection distance value, both entered manually below. It's normally best to find out what the projector that is going to be installed is capable of before you attempt to modify these values. Only lens or distance can be used. The other will be determined automatically based on the former. Zoom factor sets the lens zoom factor, which will then be added to the calculations for projector distances based on the lens. For zoom lenses selected above, show zoom range indicates the optimal area on the drawing where the projector should be placed to achieve the desired image size within the zoom range of the lens. This is particularly useful if the projector is going to be mounted on a rail that can be moved or adjusted after installation. Vertical position allows you to select the projector placement mode. When using screen center, the center of the projector lens aligns with the screen center. Aligned to top, the top of the projector body aligns with the top of the screen border. Aligned to bottom, and the bottom of the projector body aligns with the bottom of the screen border. Stand will place the projector on a stand selected in Stand Model. Rigged will place the projector at a height specified in Floor Height with the bottom of the projector at the Trim Height. Specific Shift will shift the projector relative to the screen center by the vertical shift distance, as measured from the center of the projector lens. Vertical Shift 
for projectors on a stand with a specific shift, specifies the distance between the floor, as set by the floor height, and the stand or projector. This allows stands or projectors to be placed on a plane shifted up or down from the screen. Stand model, like projector model, selects the projector stand model from a library. This option, of course, only appears when you have the projector placed on a stand. For rig projectors, or projectors on a stand, floor height indicates the distance from the active layer plane to the floor, effectively shifting the floor by the indicated height. Left, right, and front back shift for projectors on a stand shifts the stand to the left or right, front or back, relative to the projector body. For rig projectors, trim bottom indicates the location of the bottom of the projector. Vertical offset angle and vertical offset percentage display the vertical offset angle of the projector to the screen based on the vertical position of the projector as both angle and a percentage, similar to the horizontal options we saw above. Enabling multiple projectors by selecting whether they are stacked or side by side. This option allows either a single projector or two. For side by side multiple projectors, horizontal space sets the distance between them. Offset distance for side by side multiple projectors sets the offset distance between the screen and the second projector relative to the first projector. This allows you to alter the distance and angle settings above for the main projector then control the second projector merely by an offset. If you need the two projectors in very different locations, then it may make sense to use two video screen objects and disable the screen on the second one to give you more control. When first selected, Class Video Screen Parts automatically creates classes for the different parts of the video screen for appearance and visibility control. This allows portions of the video screen, projector, and other elements to be set to visible, grade, or invisible. Once the classes have been created, this checkbox toggles whether class visibility changes will apply to the selected video screen object or not. When screen parts are classed, parts classes prefix creates a prefix for the class names so that they're sorted together in the organization dialog, object info palette, and navigation palettes. Note, as you might expect, adds a note, which can be placed on the drawing using the text option setting below. Text options opens the Text Options dialog box to enable the display and format the text of labels. Here, you can select the various label components that will be placed in Plan View along with the video screen. They will update automatically to reflect any related changes in the settings above. Default Text Positions is an easy way of resetting text labels to their default positions if you happen to lose sight of them, or if you want to reset the locations of multiple video screen text labels all at once. Finally, Update forces an update of the video screen's parameters manually. This is normally not needed, as the values above when altered should trigger an update automatically, but this is simply a way to ensure that all changes are being displayed actively. Next, let's take a look at blended screens. Blended screens simulate projection screens that require multiple projectors to produce one large image. Blended screen objects share many of the same options as the video screen's objects we just reviewed. The Blended Screen tool is found in the Event Design toolset. We're going to go ahead and place a blended screen into the document, and then go over to the settings in the Object Info Palette. As opposed to picking stock screen sizes like you would with the Video Screen tool, the Blended Screen tool is looking for specific dimensions to be entered. By default, you'll have the option to enter a width and a height. Under the Screen Type options, we have the option for Curved Screens. If this option is checked, the option for straight width and curve depth will also become available. Most of the projector settings are also similar. However, there are a few differences. As opposed to the checkbox for show projector, the blended screen has an option for insert projectors. Since a blended screen has multiple projectors that overlap in order to make up the larger image, there's also additional options for how these projectors will overlap. The area horizontal count value is how many projectors will be used on the blended screen. You can adjust the value on how much the projectors will overlap based on a specific measurement, a number of pixels, or a percentage, and you can also choose the blend reference point. These values will update when others are changed, so you may need to adjust multiple settings in specific orders to get the exact result you want. Video screens have a huge array of options and settings. 
We hope this video helped to familiarize you with all of the possible combinations and how to get the style you're looking for quickly and easily.